So, Dream RJ here. Just thought I would do another tutorial for Hammer Editor. Uh, so, it's a continuation of the the basic tutorial uh, map that I did. You know, the create a basic tutorial uh, map, Pod Two map. So, it's a continuation of that, really. So, I'll be I'll be using that that room. So, we'll just go to File, Open, and we'll open the tutorial map up. <coughs> uh, in your cases, if you're watching or following me, uh, open your map up. So, so, we'll start with the chamber doors. So, to do chamber doors, they are pretty straightforward to do. Uh, but first of all, you will need to also get a the prefabs for the door frames. Uh, which are on the Thinking with Portals forum uh, website. So I will put a link in it for to to that in the description. So what you need to do is you need to first of all you need to put the the, the chamber door in. So you click on the Enter to Creation tool, go to here, and type chamber in. Test chamber door. Click it into the world. S click the click the selection tool. Move it about into the room and because this is that's the exit I think yeah so that's the exit so this is the entrance so what we need to do and I'm also on a bad grid size so just change the grid size to 32 so it's easy to snap to the grids okay And then what we need to do is we just need to put it into the door like so. So it's flush and perfect. And then as you can see, it's not. It needs to be pulled down into the, onto the floor. So all you do is you just click and drag it to the floor like so. And then all you need to do, just to make sure that it's flush to the floor, just go underneath like this is. Well, this is what I do, and just check that it's not floating, and it isn't. So that's perfectly in position. So as you can see, you'll you'll see a gap around around the door so we need to fill that in with a frame I mean you can make your own frames but it's a bit of a pain to make your own with the cutting tool but it's very you know once you're used to the cutting tool you can do it no problem I mean I've made them before it's not it's pretty cool tool the cutting tool I, I love it so all we need to do is we then need to go back to the create an entity tool click on the little box and type funk underscore instance because it will be a funk instance that we're using because it's a frame so we click it into the world into the 3d world just press x on the keyboard so i can get an highlighted box just a tip when you press the x on the keyboard if you press it it disappears once you've got this selected or if you press x again it'll put x's around things uh, you know selection tools around things so you can make it easier to click things okay so you need to go to the vmf file name double click it and then what we need to do is we need to go to SD con ooh T maps. Okay, oh that's because I changed the order. So go to instances folder and then one if if you've got if you've downloaded the prefabs folder, you should double click it and then because it'll be in the prefabs. I mean what I actually might do actually I might just upload this to Dropbox and people can just download from my Dropbox if you want and I'll put it I'll set this folder for you all and so you can download it. So the the one we need is the door frame god underscore god and because we use it we because we're not doing a destroyed theme or anything we can or a bit behind the scenes we can just use this one and then open and apply and as you can see it's put a frame into the world and it's a funk funk instance. So then what we need to do is we just need to rotate it And line it up with the door and it's just one a bit above the door then so as you can see it's totally flush totally flush against the wall oh no it's not there actually oh yes it is it's totally flush against the wall and it's perfectly in sync and in line so then you just unclick and that's 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 that <sighs> 
just go to change a few instances and show normal and then you'll see them as normal so then you don't get a yellow or tinted color of it because you've got an instance in your map so that's how you do the chamber door so first of all we'll, what we'll do is we'll just double click this and then we'll just give it a name so we'll call this chamber door one you can call it whatever you want to call it but i'll just call it chamber door chamber underscore door one and then uh you could just do chamber door underscore entrance okay we'll do it like that then entrance and exit okay so you don't need to bother with these and that's it so then what you need to do now is we then need to create a trigger to trigger the door so we need to click this block creation tool and then as you can see this is the starting area so you need to create a block i just create it this one so that's just created a block you can see the highlighted through that brush there so then what we need to do is go to click on this little window here this texture group and te texture texture on the right hand side and in the filter box type trigger and then you'll see one here called trigger and this is the one that we need and then you'll see this box here right click on it and create and that's just created that trigger so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go to this and because it's already highlighted you, you you press the selection tool and then press Control and t on your keyboard and then you'll get and then you just tied that brush to an entity because that's what we need to do we need to tie this to an entity this trigger brush and then we need to name it we'll use a trigger multiple so just type trigger underscore multiple apply and you don't need to give it a name or anything and you don't need to do any of these just leave them as they are and then go to outputs and add on you can actually do two here you can either do start touch or on trigger and we'll just do start touch and then you select the door by using this little picking tool select the door so that puts the name of the door in into this target entity and then you go to the input and you just go open and apply and that's how you do the trigger so then what you need to do is we need to copy this onto the other side so we can close the door once you've entered so you press the shift key on your keyboard and shift drag it to the f to the to the inside of the thing and then you just need to create resize this because it doesn't need to be that big because this is just for the close so as you can see i've just resized it so i shift dragged it and i resized it so then you double click this and then you just need to change this output on end touch so on end touch and then change the open to close and apply and that's as simple as that so then what we need to do then is because we've got two doors we need to i'm going to i'm going to cheat or we can cheat because that's what hammer's good for you, it's very good to cheat is you can select all these which is what i'm doing now i'm just selecting all these brushes and the and, and the frame and then what i'm doing is i'm just going to shift drag to the other to the other side the other exit to the exit so i'm shift dragging so it's copied them and it's put them over there you can also do a paste special but i just prefer to do it like this so then what we need to do now is we need to rotate it because it's the wrong way around and then we just need to put it into position like so and as you can see it's perfectly in position so then all you need to do then is you need to click on the chamber door because you've copied it it's got the same name so just change the name from entrance to exit and that's that done and then what you need to do is because this is a thingy brush i mean it still doesn't matter about this but we'll make this 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 trigger a bit bigger now because it's the exit and exit door and i've just resized it so you need to double click this and you also need to change the output to and click on the door so it's oops click on the door so it's got exit okay and you also need to change them around so this is on now on start touch apply and open so you're just reversing them 
I could have just switched the two textures around, uh, the triggers around, but it's better. I'll just do it this way now. I'm doing it, aren't I? So, okay. Oops, wrong one. Oh, it's a nuisance. I'll do it from this way. Oh, there we go. Okay. So. This is close, so on enter touch and then close and then click the door so it's got exit and then apply and done. That's it, that's that's the chamber doors done. And then you just make sure you always save. Saving is very important in Hammer. So that's the chamber doors done. So now we're gonna do the indicator lights. So we've got this button here. What we'll do is we'll put indicator lights to these fizzlers over here. So we'll we we will I'll just show you how to do the indicator lights. So you press the overlay tool, like so. And you go to browse and then you type indicate I N D I C just because it's easier. And then you'll see these two here in the top right corner, which is floor and wall. We want the floor for now because we're working on the floor. So you click it or double click it. And then you just click it and put it into the world onto the floor like so. Go back to the selection tool. And you move around on this view until you can see this in the top down view. This is the top down view. And so you can make it easier. And also what you need to do is you just need to mess about until it snaps to the grid so it's perfectly in line. So just change the grid size to 8. Because when you're working with a indicator texture, it's always when you're doing the indicator light, it's always good to be on grid size eight, and it shows you what grid size you want at the bottom right corner there. So snap on grid eight. So then we'll rotate this, and we'll move it out. And then what you need to do is you need to make sure the texture lock is unticked which it is now. <laughs> so that's ticked. That means when you stretch, I've explained this in a previous video, but if I stretch this now, it will stretch the texture. As you can see, it's stretched it. And that is not what we want. So let me just undo that a minute. And then go, so you unclick this here in the top of the buttons on this toolbar here. Click, unclick it so it's not selected. So then when you stretch this, it'll make a brush like that. It'll stretch it and it'll, it'll re, re, you know, it's cool. Okay, so that's that. So then what we need to do is you'll see that this brush is not has, has not got that texture on. So what we need to do is we need to double click it, click this picking tool, and then click on the brush faces, sorry. <laughs> And then click pick and then press control press the control key on the keyboard keep it pressed and click this brush here so you select both at the same time if you don't press control then it doesn't select multiple faces so control it when you know using the control key and the and the shift key is very useful shortcuts you know the keyboard is very useful in hammer for keyboard shortcuts so then as you can see, we've got this, this now is now on this brush. So what we need to do is just press shift again, shift drag on the keyboard, rotate it. So that's making a, multi a copy of it. And as you can see, we've got this brush. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I have left a gap in the corner. That is going to be for the corner, for the corner uh, piece. So let me just sort this brush face out again. So pick. So it's only on this brush, so we need that brush. Press control. So as you can see, I, I unselected this now. I don't want it on this one because it's not this brush is on this texture is only on the on these brushes, so it doesn't need to be on that one. So you just select these brushes that it's going to be on and then apply. And then if you move it, it'll just reappear. It's just it, it just takes a while for, for hammer to re render once you've reselected the brush surfaces. So if you move it out one unit and move it back into position, it'll just re-render it. Okay, okay. So now what we want to do is we're just gonna resize this to the walls and then that's bits done. And then I'll do the corner piece. So that's that. So as you can see, it's to the wall. 
and then you'll see that that gap is missing so what we need to do is go back to the overlay tool click on browse and then you'll see these two next to it this two two corner pieces so you've got a wall and a floor because we're on the floor we want the floor one so you click the floor click it there and as you can see it's not perfectly on the grid so we just go to the top down view and snap it into the position and that's perfectly on grid and perfectly aligned and that's how you do the corner piece so now we need to do the wall piece so what we need to do is we need to go back to the overlay click on the browse and then just as simple as that click on the wall one click on the wall click the selection tool so it goes it becomes highlightable and selectable and movable and rotate adjustable whatever <laughs> and rotate it and s just move it into position so it's perfectly on the grid so it snaps into the grid and then just push it down to the floor like so and then what we need to do is we just need to resize it so we're just going to drag it up to about there perfect and then what we need to do is we need to let me just check that that's perfect here it is okay so we need to shift drag this now on the wall so we get a multiple oh it didn't shift drag did it so undo a minute so shift and drag to copy it perfect sometimes when you press the shift key it doesn't respond it's pain sometimes but you get used to it <laughs> sometimes you have to repeat it and repeat it undoing is very common in hammer sometimes so you're just going to move this i'm going to move this up here like so and put it into position and this needs to just be another six eight units less so there you go it's because it needs gap for the corner unit you see so as you can see that's now perfectly saying that that is going to turn the visitors off you see so what you need to do is you need to go back to the overlay tool so click the overlay tool go to browse and now you need to select the wall the wall corner piece so it's this one here click it onto the wall click the selection tool and just put it into position like so so it snaps into grid and so it's perfectly in, in the center and that's how you do that so now that's the basics of putting these into position so then what we need to do is we need to you, you you're thinking how do you make them turn orange well that's that's very 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 simple you just basically select all these bushes like so so and don't forget the corner piece as you can see I've selected it because it's got a, a yellow box around it and you need to just select all of these texture bush air uh, overlay bushes uh, textures and you need to just double click until you get the properties up and then you click on name and then we need to name it indicator underscore button hang on let's let's do this properly <laughs> button underscore fizzler indicators okay apply so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this this is very important I copy it so we're copying this and then I'm going to go to the create entity tool and all you need to do is type in texture toggle and then you'll see an n underscore texture toggle so you click it and then what I always do to fact to make it much easier to organize your map and to keep it neat and tidy is I always put the texture toggle if I'm using texture toggles near the button or near the indicator lights that I'm that it's linked to so I know which one belongs to which because when you've got a lot of stuff and a lot of lights it can get confusing if you don't put them right next to the ones that they belong to so it's very good to keep them close together so you know which belongs to which just to, just a tip so you've created the texture toggle and I've put it there so I know where it belongs. So you double click the texture toggle and then you've got the name. So you need to, I'm going to paste that what I copied and pasted. And I'm going to do underscore toggle. And that tells me now that this is the toggle. So I know that this is the toggle. And then you've got target bushes. This is very important. So you click on the little picking tool and then you just basically click on the indicator so it puts the name of it I could have just pasted the name as well it's up to you it doesn't make any difference so then you click apply and that's that so let's just save 
because it seemed like Hammer was about to crash for a second there. So that's that's basically that part. So now what you need to do, you need to tell the toggle to change the, the texture colour of these. So you need to click on the button, outputs, click on add, on pressed, click the texture toggle, so it's selected, and then it's set texture in index. And then you so it's got set texture index and then in that a perimeter override of one and then type one in and apply and then you'll see that you've created that so you can copy this and paste it so you've got a, a duplicate copy of it so then what we need to do is we need to change this to on unpressed so on unpressed set to zero because obviously we're changing it back on unpressed so apply and OK and that's how you basically make it turn on and off the orange and blue and there another way of doing the t uh, triggering these indicator lights is also by doing a panel so the panel is done by going to the creation editor tool go into here and type in indicator and then you've got prop underscore indicator underscore panel so you click it and you click it onto the onto the wall where you want it and then cl click the selection tool and as you can see it's the wrong way around so what we need to do is we just need to rotate it so select it and rotate it and then just put it flush against the bar these are very fiddly so you've got to go down to at least a grid size one or two to get this flush against the wall they are a pain sometimes but you do get used to it so what we need to do is we just need to try and make it look cool and put it into the world so it doesn't look too bad I mean, obviously this is just a tutorial map so I'm not going to be too fussy about it being absolutely perfect I mean I know it's very close to those indicator lights but it looks it doesn't look too bad this is just a tutorial map anyway so anyway so you've so you've got this panel in place so basically what this panel does it's just another way of of toggling these textures and 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 to make it a more easier way to see what's happening in the old in the old test chamber so what you need to do you need to double click it so you can go to the properties and you will need to give it a name so but i'll do that in a second so you, you and you need to go to start visible you need to go yes because you, you need to make sure that it's got a, it's visible so it doesn't just appear once you know once it's been pressed so that's very important that you click yes so then in the name I'm, I think I just paste and then I just because I've already got that pasted and then just underscore panel this time like so and apply and then you've got and then you've got this option underneath where it's got indicator lights this is this is basically the same as the texture toggle it does exactly what the, t the, the texture toggle does and as you can see because the indicator lights are underneath I can just double click the, uh, click this one with the picking tool and then it's put that name in there and then apply like so and basically the way that works is once this is on it basically does these as well so it's it's very straightforward and then you just go to the button and then in the output i'll just copy and paste these copy paste and then you just change this to the panel like so and apply don't worry about that it's just oh yeah yeah, yeah hang on hang on check sorry yeah on on oh yeah the output the outputs so the outputs eh, on pressed it's check because it's 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 right and on unpressed we want it unchecked so uncheck like so so that's going to be weird because now it's got like now now the toggle is going to be used twice so what we'll do we'll just remove the toggles so let's delete the toggles because we don't need the toggle now because we're using the panel but the toggle is just a way of doing it without the the panel but they both work the same way similar but with the ta with the panels you can do a lot more with the panels you can do timers and other things like that you see so it's so it makes it a bit easier but uh so we can delete this 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 toggle because we're not going to be using it okay so save so as you can see this is this is the the the, the indicator panel but 
I've got to be. I've got to tell you this now. This is very, very important. If if you 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 need to make sure you put a model with this. If you do not put a model model with this, it will show up in game. It won't show. This this will not show up in game. All you'll see in game is the is the box. You know, is the actual uncheck and check box a uh, texture thing. So you will not see the actual frame. So this is why it's very important to go to the creation entity tool. And type in here in this little box down here static so you get prop static so you want to create a prop underscore static click it into the middle there or whenever wherever and then you need to go to the selection tool double click it and then click on world model and then what you need as you can see I've already got the frame selected and then you need to go to the frame like so and so yeah basically you need to type in sign underscore frame or just type sign and it should find it but you need to in the word model you need to find the sign frame and it's got sign zero frame zero one or zero two and this is a twin one you see and then this is a singular one and everything so we're just using the singular one so you click apply and that's put it into the world so as you can see it's the wrong way around again <laughs> so you need to double click till you get the rotation things and to rotate it so it's the other way around and then this is the fiddly part now you need to try and line it up with the other one now this is another pro tip now it now once you've line when you're lining this up it's very very important to when you when you've lined these up to group them so leave a gap so you can easily select the, the the panel as well so you can select them together and then right click once you've got them once you once you so so basically to group them you select this one and then you press the control key remember the control key came to, to select multiple f f items multiple brushes and everything and click the panel so you've got both selected control key is very important to keep hold of it where you're trying to select multiple surfaces and then you can right click and group and that's how you group them and then as you can see if you move them you move them together because they group together so if you click on then the objects in this top box here you've got grouped objects solids if you click on objects and then unclick you can then click this singular piece because you've just you've just oh, you've just clicked on objects so then you can put that back into position like so so it's flush against the wall and everything so then if you click on groups again you'll see if you select it they're still grouped and you can move them together because you've already grouped them that's just a pro tip so yeah that's it that's how you do the the indicator lights so what we'll do is we'll just do a quick compile to show you what it looks like in game uh, to give you an idea of what we've just done So you're just compiling the map. Uh, another, another, another tip while it's compiling. Uh, when you go to one map, uh, it's oh, it's done. Okay, let's let's do this quickly first. Then. So as you can see, it's open portal. So. We're in, and there's the the indicator. As you can see, it's checked. And there we go. And as you can see, that's how it works. So you stand off the button, and it turns it off, and it's unchecked. Stand on, and it's checked. Off, on, off, on. And as you can see, the chamber door works perfectly. Other than I've put the I've put this the wrong way around, so I'll have to rotate this. But that's not a problem. And that's it. That's the exit. And that's that's how you do it. Okay. So let's close this. So yeah, what was I saying? So it's very important. As you can see these three here, these three top ones. If you want your computer will be very, 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 very laggy when it's compiling, unless you type this this in. 
what this does it tells it to use your CPU it's, it's lowest thing so if you type minus one in the perimeters so you need to go into unless you're in no normal mode you can't do that you need to click on expert mode and then you need to add this minus low in in the perimeters and the same on this one minus low and then the same on this one minus low and then when it's compiling it won't it won't slow your computer down unless you've got an, uh, an old computer it might still slow it down slightly but it's very important to, to, to type low in just another tip minus low in in these top three boxes here and that just makes basically things cool and makes it compile cool and you can do other things while it's compiling in the background because sometimes when you're building big maps it can take a long time to compile I'm telling you a long time to compile so it's very important to do that because then you can use, still use your computer while you're, while you're compiling so it's it's very cool so let me just quickly do that door because it was the wrong way round so this was the entrance wasn't it I think just that was the exit so it was this one so I just need to rotate this door because it was the wrong way around because this picture can you see this picture it should be on the on the other side so rotate and there we go perfect so when you come up the stairs there's a door enter an e entrance into the chamber and that's that uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe and if you also if you've got any ideas for any future tutorials you'd like me to do please let me know in the comment section and let me know and i will put the link to the prefabs uh, folder download in the description thanks very much and please subscribe bye